this Edward man gone, I couldn't rest easy. I couldn't be sure if he was gone for good. Maybe he was just waiting for a more opportune moment to target me again. The following day, I took a brief walk with the noble boy. But I couldn't bring myself to talk to him about what had happened. With how much distance he was keeping between us, I doubted he would be willing to do anything to help. For three days and three nights, I shook in terror. Thinking, considering, speculating, wondering. Hardly getting a wink of sleep. I was too anxious to sit still, so I paced in circles around the chair by the fireplace. It's too soon to be sure I'm safe. Can't go outside unless I absolutely must. Not even just to get water from the lake. He could be waiting in the shadows to take my life. I'm not safe here anymore. I shouldn't have said anything about my powers. They've only ever brought me trouble. I should probably find somewhere else to live. But where? How far could I even get on my own? He could be out there, waiting for me to open the door. I would need help. Don't be a fool. No one's going to help me. The boy barely even wants to talk to me anymore. All I wanted was a quiet life. Is it him? Turn. Calm yourself. He knocks harder than that. It's not him. Who's there? It's me. His sister needs more of my blood. I'm not here about Nelly today. I am... I'm sorry for being so distant lately. What? I want to talk things over. He's finally reconsidered. If he can. If he can treat me like a friend again. Then maybe I could ask him. I... I want to talk to you too. I open the door without a second thought. I let my guard drop. Because in my mind the flax and haired boy briefly took the place of the slave man from the brothel. The man who had saved me from the terrible lord offered me his hand, guided me into the light. And here he was again to set me free. To take me away from this place. Take me somewhere new. He had pulled me out of the darkest depths of despair. And here he was again, ready to offer me his hand. A glimmer of hope to cast away the shadows. So I reached out to take it. And my arm went tumbling to the ground. My hope following not far behind. Ah, uh, my arm.
this to me. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do this to me. Nothing personal. I just needed your blood. Without it, she'll lose her church. She needs the money. I need some way of getting enough money to keep her church running. So the Lord made me an offer. The Lord. Why him again? If I brought him the witch with the miracle blood, he would finance a whole new church for her. So don't take it personally. You get to be the sacrifice. To keep her church from collapsing. To keep her world from collapsing. So don't take it personally, witch. Cheers. A saint's blood and good fortune to all. You're a damn witch wearing a saint's skin. your witch. Tell me you didn't harm her dog. I smell blood. You only instructed me not to kill her. Mistakes were made. Limbs were lost. I cleaned up all the blood I got on me. No one suspected anything. That you were able to immediately recognize it as the smell of blood says quite a bit, Lord. You have killed before, haven't you? Enough yapping. She is alive, yes? Of course. No tears. Now that's a good girl. It simply wouldn't be the same if you cried and blubbered like a lowly slave or a whore. Dignified and saintly. That's what I need you to be. Aside. 
But you never could, could you? And you know what that means. That the scars I left all over you run deeper than anything you've ever experienced. Look at that face, so twisted and hideous. I bet you loathe me. That you'll never be able to forgive me. I don't care how much my father preaches forgiveness. That's the one thing you'll never get from me. I despise you with all my soul. I revile you with every fiber of my being. For every scar you gave me, I give you a lifetime of hatred. Never. You will never have my forgiveness. This man, the Lord, he destroyed me mind and body. This man ruined my life. I see. So I'm the one who ruined your life. But why should that concern me? Your words are as insignificant as the chirps of a dying robin. Scream and shout sore. It doesn't change anything. We lock the witch up and proceed as planned. Oh, Father, God of heaven and earth, my life has become nothing, shattered and empty. Good day, Lord Barnier. not hungry. I need some time to rest, so don't bother me. Yes, sir. And make sure everyone knows, they are to stay away from my room. By your command, my lord. Why? Why was she the lakeside witch? How could this happen? There, there must be something I can do. Some way to fix this. No, don't fool yourself, you damn buffoon. There's no fixing that. Her arm's been cut off. Her mind broken. If only... If only that Far Eastern dog hadn't been such a damn idiot. Then she might actually be in proper shape. Fucking fuck. I'm the one who gave the order. The only one to blame for this is me. I can spend all goddamn day regretting it, but there's no taking back what's already been done. God damn it! What the hell am I supposed to do? What can I do? I could, I could set her free. And a doctor, yes, find a good doctor. There's no getting her arm back, but he could at least patch her up. This is all my fault, so I'll do right by her. I'll look after her myself. Make sure she's taken care of for the rest of her life. Are you out of your mind, Jacopo? Why would she ever want to stay with you? Damn it. They can't stay focused. What is there to think about, boy? You already know what you must do. Get out of here, spirit. When will you learn your damn lesson? Just stay dead, damn it. The last thing I need is a pathetic ghost constantly sticking his nose in my business. Strong words from the man who can't even keep his head in the presence of said pathetic ghost. The answer is plain as day, boy. He proceed exactly as planned. Make witch's blood into a miracle elixir and distribute it at the church. You'll take in tithes as well as many people's favor for supporting their new beloved church. It's a fine scheme. I'm impressed you came up with it, boy. Silence. That was before I knew she was the witch. What does it matter? The girl's going to be dead soon regardless. Progress and growth, it always comes at a price. You need to simply accept that the price has already been paid. Tell me, is the girl worth throwing the entire venture aside? Knowing you'll lose all the goodwill you made to gain from it and more. She's Morgana's. She's my. A child can tell you which has more value. You bear the weight of this entire land, boy. Don't try to cast that aside because you killed one little girl. She isn't dead. She's still. 
Surely you can't call that living. She's not. She is. And you killed her. I did not. There's no turning back. Why are you so upset about this boy? Countless slaves have perished at your command. You had the slumberers who tried to bite you slaughtered. And only now are you concerned about another's life. Surely, you're not still clinging to your naive sentimentality, are you? Oh, but she's different from those disposable sacks of flesh. She's dear to me. We have so many wonderful memories together. I love her. Enough. You've come too far to step down from the throne. No matter how much you may have cared for the girl before, it's out of the question now. You cannot have her. When a nobleman marries, it's for political purposes. Be it connections, resources, appearance. Always something to gain. Taking a nameless peasant girl will make you the laughingstock of the land. So lock her up, and drain her until there's nothing left. Shut your damn mouth, accursed spirit. You don't have any idea what you're talking about. You don't know the first thing about how I feel about her. The things we've shared. Wait a minute. What's going on? How the hell do you know any of that? Took you long enough, boy. How did I not realize? You were never the kind of man to speak of progress and growth. That I wasn't. What the hell? What are you? I've already told you. I am the curse known as the Lord of the Land. Or if you need me to put it through simple terms for your mind. I am your sickness. You're out of your mind. I am not sick. I'm not the one who's out of his mind, boy. This is a world of madness and disease. But not of spirits. The throne drives all who sit upon it to madness. Power or sanity, a man can only have one. And all the faster will his grasp on his mind slip when he has no one at his side to shield him from his enemies. I am not Jean Francois Barnier, and there is no way for you to banish the spirit. Your mind is broken on the verge of collapse. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. No. No, 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 no. You're lying. My mind is not broken. I am perfectly sane. There's not a grain of madness in me. Tell me, Yakubo. Is this the power you always sought? Is this what you spent day and night fighting to achieve? What? How are you? I thought you wanted power in order to protect those you most cared about. But here you are, using that power to destroy their lives. Or is power the only thing you care about protecting anymore? Shut up. Is that what I took up the blade for all those years ago? Enough. You don't have any place criticizing me. You're just a stupid child with his head in the clouds. Who thinks he can become some kind of hero? If you hadn't been so foolish, I wouldn't be in this place at all. You're right. We chose the wrong path. And there's no way for us to get back on the right one any longer. This wasn't what I had wanted at all. The future I had dreamed of. The outcome I had hoped for. But who did I even explain that to? And who would even understand if I tried? There were walls as high as the eye could see on both sides of this path. Forward was the only way I could go. I had killed my old friends and comrades. Lost everything along the way. But 
but still I marched on. Because that was all I could do. And now, power was the only thing that remained in my hands. So I would make a despot of myself, bury all my feelings for her, and continue my march straight into hell. I had no other choice. Every day felt like a slog through a swamp with no end in sight. Though I did everything to keep up appearances when I wasn't alone. I masked any trace of discord beneath a veil of bottomless confidence. It had reached a point where nearly everything I had said or did in public was an act. A farce, even. Among the mistakes the Far Eastern dog had made was involving a third party. He was a young man, and there was a considerable possibility he was nobility which meant I couldn't simply dispose of the boy until I had more information. Between that and his decision to cut off Morgana's arm, I was looking like quite a fool for thinking I could tame a beast. Though, of course, my biggest mistake was coming up with the scheme in the first place. Soon after locking Morgana up in the tower, I summoned the boy. Making it abundantly clear he was not to tell anyone what he knew. Then sealing the deal by turning him into a co-conspirator. The boy was irritatingly timid in part, I presume because the thought the dog had already threatened him. All it took to keep him nice and obedient was a stern glare and a few choice words. I hired the dog to be my bodyguard, and assigned the boy as an administrative supervising post on the new church grounds. Having been originally built as a second manor for the previous lord, the church was still more mansion than church, which meant there was an abundance of rooms for the boy to stay in. summoned the saintess there to serve as the face of the church. She was to remain on the grounds all day, and at night she would stay in a cottage a safe distance from the church. I also informed her that I stored my money and valuables in the observation tower, and that she would be charged with treason if she trespassed. She was naturally a trusting woman, and she seemed grateful for everything I was doing for her, so I doubted she would spill anything. Though even if she did, three keys were required to enter the tower one held by me, one by the dog, and one by the boy. So all three of us were in this until the witch died. I had one of my aides dig around for information on the noble boy. Mel was his name, and he claimed that he had been banished from his home, but I couldn't just take him at his word. I had to be absolutely sure, so that when the witch died, I could eliminate him. The dog, too, of course. No one who knew anything could be allowed to live. That said, he seemed like he could put up a better fight than the boy, so I'd have to be a little more careful in choosing how to take him out. I wasn't too worried, though. I was the Lord, after all. So long as that much didn't change, I could do just about anything. Once we started distributing the Miracle Elixir, the church's following grew far quicker than I had expected. Numerous reports of people being cured of diseases spread through the city, and before long, even the healthy came seeking its powers. Every smiling face that walked out of the chapel put another black stain on my spirit. Her blood really was miraculous. And it was then that I understood why the last Barnier held all those banquets. He wasn't just torturing a little girl. He was feasting on miracles. And now that word was spreading, and I knew the rumors were true, I had lost my final escape route. The plan failing entirely because her blood was just ordinary blood. Forward was the only route that remained. One day, the Far Eastern dog said to me, Everything is proceeding exactly as you said it would, Lord. I didn't believe in miracles, but seeing all this has tempted me to change my mind. You were right. One girl's life is indeed a worthy exchange. I wasn't sure how I responded. Though by that point, I largely just rattled off bitter snark and insults reflexively in response to anything. So presumably I called the dog a dog, perhaps giving a laugh. Most nights, I could no longer sleep without the aid of alcohol. I was pretty sure none of it was poisoned, but I spent a lot of time throwing it back up regardless. 
mysterious cackling echoed in my chambers. The world twisted and contorted. Quite frankly, I was considering taking my own life. But I wouldn't let myself run away from what I had done. What I was doing to her. I had said I would continue my march straight down to hell. And that was exactly what I planned to do. Again and again, I repeated to myself. I feel nothing for her. I never loved her. She's just another faceless peasant. I have no memories of my past life. The days turned to months, and soon spring was upon us. <laughs> they finally got shackles to put on me. Must have given them quite the scare when I tried to climb the wall. Isn't that funny? Look, I made a flower crown. Festival preparations seem to be going well. Hey, aren't you going to go? I am not going anywhere. You're a strange one. It's much nicer out there than it is in here. If anyone is to leave, it will not be me. Say, I've been wondering, who are you anyway? I? I was created to carry your pain. That doesn't answer the question. I cannot give you any other one, though. I carry your pain for you and offer you someone to talk to. So the last remaining flame of hope in your heart doesn't flicker out. How very honorable of you. You sound like a saint. I don't know how you could stand living like that. What? What's so funny? Nothing. Just... You don't remember anything, do you? I don't consider my work to be saintly, but if you perceive it that way, then that's thanks to you. Because that's who you were, Morgana. You're not making any sense. That's fine, my dear. Knowing what I carry in my spirit would only cause you pain. So I just beg you to live on. To not give up hope. Where am I supposed to find hope? Chained up in a tower. You've been with me long enough. You see me here. My body is on the verge of death. And a black cloud fills my spirit. I despise those men. Every one of them. Who did this to me? I want to kill them myself. And I hate that I lack the power to do so. I want to place a curse on them all. Don't talk like that, Morgana. Please keep your spirit pure. Don't talk about cursing people. There's still hope. Someone. Someone will come to save you. Maybe one of those three will have a change of heart. Or maybe someone else will come through that door. Just have a little patience, alright? There's no point. Even if someone does come, I have nowhere to return to. I have nowhere. That's not true. Remember all those years ago, when the Lord had chained you up. Someone came and set you free then, and someone will. No one's coming. That was a miracle. A one-time miracle. The flaxen-haired boy, he lied to me. This world is nothing but betrayal. No one is going to set me free anymore. Actually, 
There's one possibility for my salvation. Perfect. Then we'll wait for him to come. Yes, let's. Let's wait for an angel to come. What? An angel to come and set me free. Morgana. Deliver divine punishment unto the sinners who would defile me. Morning, Maria. You're here bright and early. Hey. Yeah, not like I've got much else on my plate. Why well, aren't you quite the workaholic? You know, you're going to be about that age when most girls will close up shop and settle down with a man or three. And you know that no man wants to get hitched with this kind of bitch. Fair enough. Most girls in this biz are rough around the edges, but you're rough all the way through. Like, I got all up in a client's face the other day. Now that was a sight to see. But anyway, Blacksmith brought this by for you. Huh? Oh, that. I was planning to go pick that up myself. Special thanks for being such a faithful patron, he said. Never met another prostitute who regulars at the smithy. That's one heck of a hobby. Maybe so. But it's the only hobby I have. Not gonna lie, that's a little scary. What kind of girl collects knives? What kind of girl doesn't like something nice and shiny? There's nothing more to it, right? It's just a collection, not for you to, like, use or anything. Like I said, they're shiny. And when have I ever drawn a knife on any of you? Never, right? Oh no, now you use them on us. The thought never crossed my mind. I know how much you care about us girls. I just mean... You're not planning to do anything, like, dangerous? Oh no, hell no. You're way overthinking it. If you say so. It just looked like this one was made for a special occasion or something. You even had your name engraved in it. What's so strange about that? Collectors get their names engraved on shit all the time. I once had an ex-mercenary for a client, and he told me people engrave names and weapons for all sorts of reasons. The name of someone you won't love to help strengthen your resolve. Your own name is a symbol of your honor. Is this for... How much honor does a dirty old whore like me even have? Like I said, it's just my hobby. I like shiny things, and that's all there is to it. Now hand it over. Promise me you won't do anything dangerous with it. Pinky swear. Thanks. Sorry, friend. It had been four years since the raid on the brothel, and we were still just barely getting back on our feet. It would never be the same as before, though. Not because we had to move locations, but because the slums were shrinking away to almost nothing thanks to the Lord's renovations. Not to mention all the new foreign women who sold their services up in the city's bustling marketplace. Most of our old regulars had taken their business there, and we weren't drawing in much in the way of new blood either. With better options to get their rocks off, only the real oddballs went for the rundown whorehouse and a little back alley in the slums. It was enough to keep us afloat, but we'd barely last we'd hardly last another six months. A year if we were real lucky. And while we were down here fighting to make it day by day, our ever gracious lord was playing a festival to celebrate the spring harvest. Celebrations were to take place in and around the new church set up across the river, and with this being the first annual Harvest Festival, the whole city was in a rather jolly mood. Everyone except us slum rats, of course. The merchants, the upper class, and even most of the regular citizens were in love with the Lord. Public opinion took a huge turn after the new church opened its doors. I presumed it was all part of his grand plan. Me, on the other hand, I was far from pleased. He had abandoned us in the slums left all his old friends out to dry because he wanted a little extra gold. 
And like hell, I was going to stand for that. Word through the grapevine was the Lord and his bodyguard spent a lot of time at the new church. A nun everyone called the saintess work there hanging out some kind of miracle elixir. I assumed it was her he had business with. But his business didn't matter so much as the fact that he was there. There was no way I was getting through the fortifications around his manor on the hill. But the church wouldn't be nearly as well protected. Last night I snuck under the grounds to survey the area. There was no sign of any guards or people at all. So it wouldn't likely be difficult for me to slip into the building and hide there until he showed up. Tonight, I brought everything. I was going all in. These past four years, my feelings for him have been, well, mixed, to put it lightly. I knew damn well he wasn't the same man I grew up with, but a part of me, deep down, wanted to believe that man was still there. That maybe, he had some reason, and I just wasn't seeing it. That I was misinterpreting him somehow. But if I was right, and the old Yakupo was gone, I would settle it, once and for all, tonight. It's quiet in there. Doors locked tight, figures. Now with that out of the way, how do I want to get in? Could break a window. I'd rather not make that much noise, though. Hmm? Now, who do we have here? He's heading for the mansion. Maybe he's got a key. I was gonna bail if I ran across anyone. But that might not be necessary. How much longer am I gonna have to deal with this? And I can't believe he's holding a festival. He's gotta be out of his mind. <laughs> I'm too tired to worry about this tonight. Don't. Move. What? Oh, and no squealing either. One peep, and this little baby will carve you a brand new mouth. What? What? Who are... Are... Are you a thief? I don't want your shit. I just want you to answer a couple questions. If you can do that for me, you get to keep your throat in one piece. What do you want from me? What are you doing here? The Lord comes by here pretty often, right? I want to have a little chat with him. Are you out of your mind? I can't let you see the Lord. Oh, alright. Nighty night then. Wait. I'm not fucking around. I don't care who you are. If you're gonna cover for him, then say your prayers and curse your bad luck. What's it gonna be, little man? Don't hurt me, please. Where's the Lord? He's not... he's not here. It's nice knowing you. Slow down, he's not here now. But he'll be here at dawn. Is that so? I'm not comfortable saying anymore out here. Someone might see us. It'll be safer if we go to my room. We can talk more there. And how do I know you're not gonna split the second I let go? I swear. I, I don't know you either. But you're not here to just talk to the Lord, are you? I'm doing what he says, but not because I agree with him. So if anything, I'm on your side. Better at sucking dick than most of the prostitutes I know. I mean it. At the very least, we can't have a productive conversation if we're both on edge like this. Got a decent head on your shoulder for someone who is within seconds of losing it. All right, you convince me. Lead the way, little man. But if you so much as breathe suspiciously, your head will roll. I get it. On your feet. I definitely have trouble sleeping after this if I had to kill a complete stranger. Well, well. 
nice looking room you got for yourself, little man. So, the Lord's gonna be here bright and early, you said. But why? Um, daytime I'd understand if he was here to play friendly with all his followers. But no one's gonna be here at the ass crack of dawn. They're not his followers. The patrons of the church are true believers in the word of God. Can't say I'm convinced. Looks more to me like he's built himself a damn cult. Now, my question. I, the Lord has important business to attend to in the mornings. I'm not stupid. I'm asking what his business is. I can't, I can't tell you that. Only that he'll be here early in the morning. You think I'm just going to take you at your word? Oh, I can't tell you why, but I promise he'll be here. It's really, really important, so just wait here till morning. So I just sit in my thumbs, morning rolls around, and whoosh, I'm never seen again. That sound about right? No. Then answer my question. What's he going to be doing here so early? He's coming to check on some valuable assets. Say again? I help manage his assets. But not because I want to. He's threatening me. And what are these assets? It's... Spit it out. I can't. I really can't. Anything but that. What if I say I'll kill you if you don't? Go right ahead. Threaten me all you want. That's the one thing I can never tell anyone. Because they'll make you disappear if you spill. It's not... It's not my safety I care about. It's my sister. They'll kill my sister if I tell anyone. So I can't say anything. You have a sister. She's my only family. I see. So the Lord's blackmailing you to help manage his assets. And as part of that, he's also holding your sister hostage. Not directly, but essentially yes. Sick, rotten fuck. I don't have any family myself, but a few years back there was this girl who was like a sister to me. Oh? Uh -huh. And he... he felt kind of the same way about her, or at least I thought. But now he's fallen so far, he's taken some kid's sister hostage. Maybe I'm reading into things, but do you actually know the Lord? I did. Like a former mistress or something? Oh, hell no. We grew up together, believe it or not. What? So you used to be a noble? No, you dingus. I don't think so. You don't seem particularly dignified. Yep, just a dirty old whore here. Sorry to disappoint. Whoa, whoa, I never said that. Anyway, that's all you need to know about me and the Lord. Alright. Now what about you? You known him for long? About six months, maybe? So no, but you've been in regular contact with him the whole time. Tell me, what's he like these days? And don't worry, the knife's taking a nap. Just tell me whatever you can. I'm curious. I don't know much, but alright. The only time I really see the lore is when we, um... When we meet up to check in on his assets. We don't chat or anything like that. He always seems to be in a foul mood, and he gives me dirty looks whenever he sees me. Even though you're working together? Like I said, I'm not doing this because I want to. I just wound up in this position. Go on. I can tell you this, though. He's a monster. He's a cruel, evil, heartless man. No one with a conscience could do the things he... He doesn't care about how much pain he causes, and anyone who doesn't fall in line is eliminated. His reputation's unproven because he's got the saintess vouching for him. But it's all a load of crap. He's a villain and a tyrant. Sounds just like the previous lord. Previous lord? You're not from around here, little man. No, I live somewhere far away. 
just sort of ended up here recently. That explains it. There was a different guy on the throne until about four years ago. He was a vicious, barbaric fuck who treated people like his playthings. He would murder slaves by the dozens just for shits. And he did some very bad things to a little girl. This new lord is exactly the same. People are just another commodity to him. Man or woman or child, he doesn't care as long as they're useful. He'll hurt people. He'll kill them. Anything to get what he wants. I got that impression. Seen and heard was I honestly hoping. He'd tell me he wasn't as bad as the previous lord. I've heard enough. He's gone over the edge, and there's no bringing him back. I was originally planning to talk to him, but that was never going to work. He's a lost cause. So, what are you going to do? I'm gonna make sure he can't shame himself anymore. on like this. Once your job's done, once he's done with you, you're gone. You're not stupid enough to think he'd let you live, are you? What'll it be? You gonna go on being his obedient little bitch? Or are you gonna give him what's coming? Alright. I'll help. Excellent. Your tailor must be damn skilled to accommodate balls that big. Honestly, I've been waiting six months for this. For someone to show up and give me a way out. While waiting for the sun to rise, me and the little man hashed out our plan of attack. The Lord kept a skilled bodyguard around at almost all times, so we wanted to avoid causing any trouble while they were together. He was only alone for a small window of time. When he arrived at the church each morning, he would first head for his private study unguarded. That was our chance. Time was limited, which meant we'd make it simple, move quickly. We had the element of surprise on our side, though. I can do this. Now there's no room for even the slightest uncertainty. I would do this. I didn't care about saving the people from an oppressive despot or anything grand and honorable like that. All I wanted was to stop an old friend. assassinating the lord of the land. I wouldn't be a hero if I pulled it off. I'd be an insurgent. But to hell with my reputation. I'd be hunted down and killed for my crimes not long after anyway. Yakubo, as your old friend, I'll join you on your trip to hell. And then, at long last, As Mel had said, the Lord showed up at the mansion early the next morning with bodyguard in tow. The Lord disappeared into his study, and then the bodyguard headed for the chapel. Once he was out of sight, I glanced over at Mel and nodded. Who is it? It's, uh, it's me. There's something I need to talk to you about. We'll be seeing each other shortly anyway. Whatever it is, you can tell me then. It can't wait. It's important. And I don't want anyone to overhear. Is it about the assets? Yeah. Fine. Come in. Here goes. I took a deep breath. Held it in. It would all be done in a matter of seconds. All our memories together. Time we shared, sent straight down to the grave. What? So long, Yakupo. I'll see you down in hell. However, not a thing went according to plan.
My resolve rendered null in an instant. My confidence shattered like glass. My vengeance brushed aside like nothing. My outstretched knife hit empty air. Without even enough time to blink, my whole world shifted. I wasn't looking at my loathsome target's face, but the flat, unadorned ceiling above me. My body spun, and then something slammed against my back. With barely enough time to even gasp, I crashed into the floor. It all happened faster than the blink of an eye. He had me on the ground, knee pressed into my back. My arm twisted up into the air. Surprise! How could he... It's like he knew exactly what was coming. How could he react so quickly? You look perplexed. Well, unfortunately for you, I've seen my share of assassination attempts. But you... You I wasn't expecting. Let me go. I thought, if anyone... You might be different. The hell are you going on about? You weren't even going to try to talk before killing me? There's nothing to talk about. Not a goddamn thing. I've heard what you've done. What are you doing? Well, credit to where it's due. At least you didn't try to poison me. By the way, there's plenty you could have done better. Second rate attempt at best. Rushed, knowing you didn't have much time, but you still could have used the fact that we've known each other for most of our lives to get a little closer before pulling the knife. That would have increased your chances a little. Alternatively, you could have tried to distract me with your body, but I doubt you could swallow your pride long enough to do that. Shut your fucking... Get off me! Are you trying to break my arm? You would break an old friend's arm? Don't take me for a fool. You just tried to kill me, you conniving harlot. Fuck. Fucking fuck. You're a completely different man now. No. Not even a man. A useless sack of flesh. Call me whatever you like. I've heard it all in sign of your grand plan going south. I see you still haven't grown a spine yet, have you, boy? You might have had a better chance if you both came at me together. Shall I kill him? Quit your drooling dog. I want you to watch him. Make sure he doesn't try and run again. And what about the woman? She tried to attack you. Shall I kill her? Right the fuck ahead. Kill me like you kill everyone else. Cut off my head and put it on a pike in the town square. Everyone. You know. You're right. Nearly everyone I can think of died by my hands. Gratian, the rest of the gang. And Jaren, too. Excuse me? I thought Jaren died in the raid on the brothel. You're saying you killed her? That's right. It wasn't becoming the Lord that fucked you up. You were always on the other side. From the day we first met. I should have never trusted you. Fuck. So it was all bullshit, was it? Every last minute of it. Throw her somewhere I can't see her dog. Why not just kill her? The thing I need is people making a big fuss about a dead body showing up while we're preparing for the festival. And it's not like a damn whore poses any real danger to me. Especially now with her arm bending backwards. We don't need to waste any more time concerned about her. What the fuck? What the fuck, man? You won't even fucking kill me? I came in here with no intention of coming back out. And you 
You don't even have the decency to do that much for me? Shut your goddamn mouth already. Leave your key here, dog. I'll handle the business alone today. So I just have to drag the whore out then. What a disappointment. Don't get any funny ideas. Just because I only told you not to kill her doesn't mean you can sate your thirst with one of her arms or legs. You throw her out and nothing more, understood? Clear as crystal, Lord. Then get out of here. I hate... I hate myself for ever thinking you were a good guy. Enjoy an eternity in hell, asshole. How do you plan to make up for this mess you so kindly made for me? You know damn well how busy I am right now. I... I had no choice. She threatened me. Yes, you had no choice but to hole up with her until morning, and you had no choice but to lie about having business with me. Uh... Don't give me that look. Like I told the dog, I have no interest in creating any bodies during festival prep. So I'll let you off the hook for this one. What? And you'll swear. You never do anything like this again. Yes, sir. I, I swear on my life. Excellent. Next. And with that, the books are settled. The only reason I didn't hit you in the face is because your damn sister would throw a fit. So be sure to thank her when you see her. And remember, never again. Hand over your key. Now get out of my sight. Yes, sir. I'm very sorry for everything, sir. Was it all bullshit, Maria? I'm beginning to wonder myself. Not even a word before coming at me with a knife. Not even a sliver of faith in me. I've been at this long enough, and I still haven't learned my lesson. Naive enough to think that maybe she would be different. That she would understand. No matter what anyone else said about me. Believe me when I said I really was trying to help. Then I gave everything else up in hopes of improving their lives. God, I'm such a fool. How many times do I need to be reminded that no one's on my side anymore? She was right about me. I am just a useless sack of human flesh. I should head up to the tower. Hmm? What's that? A necklace? Maria must have dropped it in the struggle. So, what'd you get her? As your big sister, I'd be happy to check out the present before you give it to her. Make sure you don't make too big an ass out of yourself. Today is the day, right? You give her the present, then you finally tell her how you feel. When she comes back, give her the necklace and tell her how you feel. As she turns you down, we can all have a good laugh about it. I was positive it had been taken or broken in the raid. But you've been holding on to it? You've kept it for all these years? I would have figured... You'd have thrown it away by now. <laughs> 